Good evening, folks. Thanks for coming to our meeting this evening. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. This is the Monday, March 20th, 2023, regular city council meeting. If everyone would please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. Okay, first item on the agenda is a special presentation. Uh, it's a recognition of the first responders for service at a house fire on Spinnaker. Chief, if you would please. Hey, Mayor and Council. Hope you guys are well tonight. Uh, let me read this to you. We had a house fire on February the 13th. Uh, TKK Fire, Flint Hill, Riverview, and Steel Creek Fire Departments, along with Fort Mill Rescue, were dispatched to a structure fire at Spinnaker Drive on February 13th. Our first arriving unit reported a working fire with heavy smoke from the front of the house. Crews went to work to extinguish the fire and search for victims. TKK police responded and assisted us with traffic and support. Minutes later, I met Catherine Woods, the homeowner, in the front yard of her home and asked, was everybody out? She said, yes. She said she had some family pets that were still inside, three cats and two dogs. The crews were assigned to search for the pets. They quickly found the animals and began bringing them out. Once the animals came out, our firefighters, Fort Mill EMS, and the police department assisted these pets and took care of them and began care. We administered oxygen, uh, did CPR on the animals, and gave them oxygen through a pet mask, a special mask designed for pets. And through all of that, two of the pets lived that day. The third went out the front door and, uh, and is alive today as well. Two of the pets died. The significance of this whole thing is we, uh, we called Chief Crosby called <laughs> numerous vets that day uh, with no success. My wife, who works for CN2, was on the way to the Humane Society. Mary Beth Knapp, who is a TUK resident, uh, is the director at Humane Society. She connected us with Dr. Chappelle, who is a vet that works next to her. The crew from the police department actually took these dogs to that vet. So these, the dog and the cat are alive today because of that. Um, Catherine, would you like to come up? Catherine Woods is joining us today with her basset hound, Lily. Lily, Lizzie, sorry. Uh, Lizzie is alive and well today. She was in the vet for two days. Uh, they administered, the crews administered CPR and delivered oxygen to this animal and to a cat. And man, today they're here with us. So we just want to recognize uh, everyone, everyone that was there. Dr. Chappelle, I don't know if he came in or not. I don't think Dr. Spell is with us either. Uh, guys, would y'all stand, please? Anybody was involved? So we go to work every day uh, and anticipate trying to save a life. Uh, it's never a day that we go to work and we think that a pet is going to be the thing that we're, we're there to rescue. Uh, we do that infrequently. I was sharing with Catherine yesterday, we've had the pet mask since 2013 and thankfully have never had to use them. But that day, uh, they played a huge part in saving these animals. I just want to say thank you to all of you guys. Um, I know that 
Lizzie and Pepper are alive because of everything that you did, and we're so grateful. So thank you. What you do means so much. You're welcome. We're glad they're here too. Yeah, <laughs> you guys were awesome. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Well, I don't know about everybody else, but I love it when we kick off the meeting with some good news. We got enough in this world beating us up. Good news is great. Um, Catherine, thank you so much. Thank you. And everybody yes, say bye to Lizzie. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Our next item on the agenda is public comments. Um, just remember, please uh, state your name and your address when you come to the podium. Uh, first would be Liz Duda. I'm still quiet. <laughs> we got a minute. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, so Liz Duda, 1081 Palmyra Drive. These are comments I signed up to make at the last month's meeting but didn't, couldn't stay. And it's regarding uh, the priorities that City Council established in its January 28th Vision and Direction Workshop. So you may know that my professional background is in the financial industry. I've worked on Wall Street in uh, community banks and risk management. So uh, from that, I'm perplexed by your number one priority for the city of debt paydown. Moody's Rating Agency rates Tika K City Debt as AA3, AA3, the highest rating that a city the size of Tika K can get. This reflects, and I quote, the city's light debt burden and strong financial position. How does this reconcile with your new priority? Zero debt limits the city's financial flexibility. How will the city make its major capital investments? Surely one of your finance professors taught you that it's more fair to fund capital investment through debt than with cash. Financing with debt places the payment obligation on the residents deriving value from the asset. Paying cash for capital investments now means that we are paying for the benefit of future residents. Look at your peers, what other municipalities have no debt. The city has an exceptional finance director who presented at your workshop. He noted, this, noted the city was in good financial shape as did the auditor last month at this meeting. Your finance director didn't mention the need to pay down debt. I fear that you're letting your national priorities impact your lo local decision making and not focusing on what's best for TKK. I think it's off base to say that our city's number one must do goal is debt pay down. Second, you may also know that in my volunteer work I promote healthy communities, including through TKK Healthy Kids. I'm very disappointed that City Council seems to have forgotten the teenagers who in 2021 circulated a petition, spoke to City Council, formed a board, and presented the proposal as suggested by the City Manager about their desire for a skate park. Yet City Council chose pickleball as a top five must do and a dog park as a should do goal. In your City Council workshop, you never even mentioned the teen's request for a skate park. Similarly, in your parks and rec survey that you're asking the public to fill out now, why did you not ensure that a skate park was mentioned? Additional pickleball courts was listed number one, a dog park was mentioned, but there's no mention of a skate park or skatable places in TKK. If you respond that you left it to the committee, you are our governing body and owed it to the teenagers to get the community's feedback on their request. Why bother asking community members to take their time to complete the parks and rec survey after you've already established your parks and rec priorities for the city? Are you really listening to the community members, which includes teenagers, or are you following your own personal goals or agendas? I know the city has bigger fish to fry than some of your top priorities. What about neighborhood connectivity? Should I stop? Okay. Uh, recently, you took money that was slotted to build a trail and redirected it to pay down debt instead of using that money to finance one of the many other trails, sidewalks, and pathways identified in the 2021 by the, um, by, the, by the city's planning commission. So I, I encourage you to make it a priority to work your way through the planning commission's list. They worked many hours and got significant um, feedback to put together that information. 
you have one could do goal related to one to two trails, yet that planning commission list had many on it. In our city that's doubled in size, connectivity needs to be a priority. We need more opportunities to walk, cycle, roll, and cart places. Approaching connectivity from a social level, what happened to Mayor's Gray Pledge while you're campaigning to focus on connections between community members. From what I understand, you established a committee that didn't meet. What about focusing on the health of the lake and the river, as Councilmember Machunas had pledged to do while in office? It's a critical community asset in which we've had toxic algal blooms and sediment filling in the coves and rendering some, do some docks unusable. I hope you rethink some of your priorities and make sure you're listening to all of your constituents. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Duda. Jean Vandalina. Hello again. My name is Jeannie Bandolina. I live at 5008 Teratu Drive in the older historic section. I've been a resident of TKK for 45 years. My question, which is, what is preventing the TKK City Council from taking action to reduce the deer population to a manageable number? In the past four years, the population has continued to increase exponentially in the residential areas of TKK. I and my num neighbors attribute this to the construction along 160 and Gold Hill Road that has stripped their natural habitat. The deer are destroying established vegetation and gardens, especially in the older sections of TKK. I observe the deer becoming more malnourished and diseased. Driving at night along Molokai or on TKK Drive between the turnoff at Windjammer and Windward Drive is hazardous due to the 15 to 30 tier deer that linger in the medium and on both sides of the road. Over the last 30 years, I've invested extensive time and money in developing my yard and gardens. Last month, I presented pictures of what my gardens look like four years ago. The picture you, you've the <clears throat> pictures I've just given you show their current condition. In a few short years, the deer have destroyed what it took me 30. <clears throat> 30 plus years to create and maintain. With each passing month of in inaction, the deer population increases. By this time next year, there will be even more deer in TKK. My question remains, what is preventing the TKK? <clears throat> City Council from taking action to reduce the deer to a manageable number. Thank you, and thank you for serving. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. Gentlemen, do you have any additions, deletions? Okay. Do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. I've got a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Our next item is committee appointments. <coughs> Mr. City Manager, would you please present the nominees as selected by City Council? Yes, sir. Uh, I'll read them all out so that way you can uh, you can do it with uh, with one motion for, for all the committees. But I'll, I'll read the committee name and the uh, the nominees that uh, are up for consideration this evening uh, for Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, three vacancies, three applicants: uh, Dirk Tannis, Jim Sauer, and Jim Andrus. For the Building Codes of Appeals, uh, you had. Unfortunately, uh, we've got five vacancies, but we did not have any applicants uh, for that commission, so we'll, we'll keep soliciting on that one. Um, Economic Development Commission, uh, you had six vacancies, seven applicants. Um, the top nominees are Carmen Miller, uh, Malobi um, Achike, uh, I think is how that the last name is, uh, Brian Vickers, Tony uh, Campana, uh, Jing Jin, and Drew Wilson were your top nominees. Uh, for Planning Commission, uh, you ended up with uh, six applicants for three vacancies. Your top nominees are Dustin Thompson, uh, Alice Dobleski, and Mark uh, Reher. For Stormwater Committee, um, you had one applicant. We do still have, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have five vacancies after tonight still there. Uh, ben uh, Bartelt, 
And then TGK Forever Foundation, you had four applicants uh, and four vacancies. Um, your top nominees are Constance Funderburk, no relation that I am aware of, just <laughs> for the record. Uh, Amanda Weber, Heather Jones, and Maureen Norcutt. And those are the nominees that council selected uh, to vote on this evening. Uh, Charlie, would you, I, I didn't hear all the names for the, um, uh, sorry, economic development. Would you mind going through that list? Economic development, um, you had seven applicants, uh, so six vacancies. You've got Carmen Miller, Malobi uh, Achiki, Brian Vickers, Tony Campana, Jean Jen, and Drew Wilson. Yep. Is that the Drew Wilson? Do I have a motion? Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, I make motion to approve the nominees as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> that brings us to committee reports. First up is Economic Development Commission. Councilman Machinas, if you would please, sir. All right. <clears throat> Uh, the EDC met and did have a quorum. Uh, number one, and basically the only thing on the agenda, was uh, Dean Fail, the president and CEO of the York County Chamber of Commerce, and Mark Persley came and spoke to the com committee. Um, basically, he explained in terms of what he could do for the EDC and for the city that uh, they've leaned into uh, the primary challenges that all businesses face, four key areas of focus, uh, advocacy, you know, speaking out for the businesses as a whole, diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, leadership development, um, spoke of a real need for um, K-12 to college age, um, leadership skills, um, people are going into good jobs but not careers and careers without leaders, um, and also talent and work those, workforce development. Um, recapped uh, the discussion from the prior month um, using social media, um, <clears throat> Charlie mentioned reaching out to David Swenson at the City of Rock Hill um, to get information from him. And um, uh, the members were asked to uh, determine what their priorities were to be and to come prepared to discuss those at the next meeting. Thank you, Council Melchinas. Next is our Planning Commission. Dr. Mayor Pro Temp, Tom Heisen. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Planning Commission uh, met with a quorum. They, majority of the time, they just discussed the public input about the city center concept plan for the uh, comprehensive update. Um, it was just a good back and forth of concerns, suggestions. Uh, the, at the end, the bottom line was they all kind of agreed that we need a plan, um, but they didn't necessarily agree on what the plan should be. So. Um, as there's no vote or anything yet, that was just uh, a discussion. Um, they also, the subcommittee reported about the uh, status of the Tree City for um, TKK, and as we found out, we just received our annual, yeah, uh, of being recognized as a Tree City USA, so we're good standing there. And Parks and Rec Committee did not meet, uh, but I was asked to remind the residents, if you have not completed the Parks and Rec survey, please do. We're leaving that up for a short time more, but we'll be taking that down uh, sooner than later. Um, and also good news about the water bottle filling stations. Um, they are in, uh, they'll be installed within the next few weeks, one at the original location on the trail and the other at uh, Catawba Park. And a big thank you to all the uh, citizens who uh, donated to uh, make that possible. That's it. Thank you, sir. Our next item on the agenda is a second reading of ordinance amending chapter 38 of the city's code of ordinances as it relates to the park and recs. Uh, the previous amendment to chapter 38 was tabled at the second reading in December. Staff revisited the amendment and made changes that required the amendment to go back to a new read. This changes, the changes were centered around the special event permit process the new first reading was completed in January. This is the second and final reading. Gentlemen, do you have any questions, comments, discussion? No. Okay. 
Okay. Mr. Mayor and members of council, I'd like to make a motion to approve the second reading of an ordinance amending chapter 38 of the city's code of ordinances as it relates to parks and recreation. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. <clears throat> Our next item on the agenda <clears throat> is a second reading of an ordinance to amend chapter 34, section 94 of the city code as it relates to noise. This is the second and final reading of this ordinance at last month's meeting. The first reading was approved with the exception of Sundays within the section A, subsection 8, which has been removed. The ordinance sets better parameters regarding noise while acknowledging residents' rights to enjoy their home peacefully and also recognizes others' rights to entertain, among other things. Um, so just to refresh everyone, the, uh, the ordinance as we wrote it the first time, um, Sundays were not permitted to work via uh, for our residents. Uh, city could work. Um, Gus Contractors brought up a good point that contractors should be able to work. If a man wants to make a living on a Sunday, uh, so be it. Uh, so we, uh, we amended that and brought it back for the for a second reading. Um, and what this does, it just gives a clearer defining uh, vision for us in, in the, the ordinance <coughs> for our police officers and residents to where we have more of a, a focused approach to controlling the noise. So with that, I need a motion. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, motion to approve the second reading of an ordinance to amend chapter 34, section 94, as it relates to noise. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Our next item. Shard is Casey's assistant tonight. What I do? You're almost as good as Vanna White. I yeah. do what I can. Almost. You're welcome. Almost. If we had some letters returned, that'd be you really great. You are welcome. Thanks, buddy. So this is the second reading of an ordinance adopting Chapter 24 in the city's code of ordinances as it relates to the fire department. And I guess since our guys do such a great job, <laughs> we'll, we'll let them exist in the city. Uh, so this is the second and final reading of an ordinance to establish the municipal fire department. By law, council must adopt an ordinance to establish a new city department, which is in the intent of this ordinance. So for so long, we've not even recognized that the fire department was part of the city. So now we'll finally, you guys can finally be a part of the city tonight. Chief. Good catch, Chief. Mate, Good mate. catch. Chief Hasty, you guys get paid now. <laughs> so, right. May I, since I sponsored it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, you may, sir. Mr. Mayor, members of council, <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to approve the second reading of an ordinance adopting Chapter 24 in the city's code of ordinances as it relates to the fire department. Second. Do I have a first and a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Our next item is uh, <clears throat> a bid award for landscaping services. During the budget process, council approved the park and rec budget, which contains the contract ground maintenance line item. This includes mowing services for the TGK Drive median and other green space areas throughout the city. The existing contract with Yellowstone is set to expire on March 31st. Staff put the project out for bid in accordance with the purchasing ordinance and Brightview, located in Charlotte, was the lowest qualified responsive bidder. Question, is, is this contract also uh, cover the landscape in the Catawba Park, or is this just within the peninsula this, and this other annexed areas? peninsula. Just the peninsula? That's correct. Okay. We have a separate contract for the river access and part of Catawba Park. The other part of Catawba Park, we, like the ball fields, we do ourselves. Um, this is a lot of the other, other open space. Uh, this, this particular one is TK Drive and other green space areas uh, spread out throughout the peninsula. Okay. Yes, sir. 
I'm, I'm assuming the other areas are HOA directed as far as their landscaping. Is that correct? On the peninsula? No, sir. no, no. no. Uh, off the peninsula. Lake Ridge and. That's correct. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you. Does the, the green space that we're covering, does the Glennon Center count as that green space? Um, no, sir. The golf course is doing their, their own contract on, on stuff around the clubhouse. Okay. So. The but they are reach, they are, their plan was to reach out to the company that, that we selected. So I believe they are in negotiations with Parkview as well right now. Okay. That'll be a separate contract that's funded through the through the <coughs> golf budget, not through our budget. Okay. You put it back on the golf club. You can't. You, can't, <laughs> you like it. Okay. Gentlemen, any further discussion? Okay. Well, with that, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, you got it. Go ahead. Members of Council, motion to award the bid to Brightview for landscaping services in the amount not to exceed 55000 and authorize the city manager to issue the notice to proceed. Second. I have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Our next item is new business. Um, we have to appoint to the we have to have an appointee to the York County Natural Gas Board of Directors. Uh, last year, council appointed TK's representative to the York County Natural Gas Board of Directors. Unfortunately, the representative has since resigned. City staff reposted the position. Council has reviewed the applications and selected a nominee. The city manager will now present the top nominee for council's consideration. Uh, council Mayor, uh, the top nominee is Mr. Tom Goble. It's a big award. It is. Mm -hmm. Any discussion? Okay. Well, I'd like to entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Mayor and members of council, I'd like to make a motion to approve Mr. Tom Goebbels as the city's representative to serve on the York County Natural Gas Board of Directors. Second. I have a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion passes unanimously. Another bit of new business we have. Uh, we've got a consideration of a resolution to adopt the York County Hazard Mitigation Plan. The Hazard Mitigation Plan looks at a community based on historical data, anticipates future trends, and takes measures to prevent hazards. The adoption of this plan paves the way for grant funding to address mitigation projects to reduce overall threats. Any discussion? I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not familiar with this, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'd like to just get a little clarity on it. It it's, sounds like it makes sense, but can someone explain what the, what the inspiration for this is? So it's something that the county, uh, for us, we had uh, Tim Gillette and Chief Hasty uh, working alongside with York County uh, Emergency Management uh, and other public safety emergency management folks from around the county for probably the past year, mm -hmm. I would say. It's been quite the process. Uh, they have to update this mitigation plan uh, periodically. Uh, that's what you have before you tonight. Uh, makes us uh, eligible for FEMA grants, uh, mm -hmm. FEMA reimbursements, should we need them. Um, we have been successful with uh, FEMA grants in the past with uh, backup power uh, for lift stations, city hall, things like that. Uh, we're all done through FEMA grants. Uh, and basically, in a, in a abbreviated version, by signing on with this document, supporting this document, makes us eligible for, for part of that. Okay. Yeah. Does this have anything to do with the, um, uh, the incident command post that we had set up at the uh, fall festival or anything like that? Or is this, this is just for emergencies? Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? I would like to entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor and Council, I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution to adopt the York County Hazard Mit Mitigation Plan. Second. I've got a first and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Charlie. Motion Chief. passes unanimously. And that would bring us to our city manager report. 
Ms. Funderburg, if you would, please, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, members of Council, uh, we successfully hosted our first two baseball tournaments at Catawba Park. Uh, after the first one, we tweaked some soccer and flag football schedules and added some overflow parking to better accommodate the number of vehicles coming to the park. Uh, this, pack, this past weekend proved to be uh, much more successful uh, than the first. Big thank you to Mr. Overton and his staff for working diligently to sort out the kinks uh, between the first tournament and the second. They, uh, they responded very, very quickly uh, with a solid plan that uh, seemed, seemed to work this past weekend, so we were happy about that and appreciate their efforts. Um, while on Catawba Park, April 15th, we will be doing a park dedication uh, that morning at 8 a.m. Uh, immediately following the dedication, uh, City Council is going to be throwing out the first pitches for the games that morning. So uh, hopefully you are practicing up, getting the, getting the old arms loose. Um, we, uh, and then uh, that evening we'll be hosting our first concert at Catawba Park. Uh, we've got two acts uh, coming in that night and super excited about those. Uh, the concert and festivities start at 6 p.m. We will have uh, shuttles running from uh, the Gold Hill Middle School bus parking lot located off of Dam Road. And um, we're going to also add another shuttle running from Tiki K Elementary School. So folks on the peninsula that are, are used to being able to just go right to Rundy Park, now you can, uh, if you like, you come on up to uh, Tiki K Elementary and they'll give you a ride out there. And those shuttles will be running throughout the evening. So. Uh, there is also parking available at the park, uh, but it is on a first come first serve basis. So if you want to have your vehicle there at the park, I would suggest getting there closer to six than, than seven. Uh, but we're looking forward to, uh, to that, that uh, would be our, really our second big uh, community event out there and we're, uh, with it being our first concert, we're excited about that. And as a heads up, spring pick me up week is coming up April 17th through the 21st as part of our celebration of Earth Day, which is on the 22nd. Um, we'll have uh, lots of good information coming out on our various communication platforms uh, on that uh, here in the next week or so. So uh, that's all I've got for you this evening. So we just, uh, are we, in, we encouraging folks to drive their golf carts when they normally drive their golf carts to Rundy? They can now drive them to the elementary school. That would be fine. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. All right. Um, I do have one other thing, Council, that I emailed you on, and I do have an update. Um, regarding um, the House's proposed budget um, and having the proviso in there um, requiring the short-term rentals um, or you lose your local government fund, um, which for us is estimated to be about $315,000 in the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, email back and forth with Scott Slatton um, and got another email from him today that uh, MASK is getting close on a um, standardized language uh, for cities to consider adopting as it re uh, relates to short-term rentals. Um, I had, did not get a call back from him because he, he mentioned in his email that um, it would be in a, 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 a basically a, uh, an ordinance, proposed ordinance for adoption that would not be part of, uh, wouldn't have to be part of your zoning code. Uh, so I'm not really sure how that works because that's where the, um, the no less than 90 day portion is in our zoning code. Um, so I'm waiting on a call back from him. Um, obviously, it's a proviso in the House's budget. The state is nowhere close to having their budgets passed at this point. There'll be a lot more back and forth, I'm quite certain, uh, over the coming weeks and months. Uh, but And I'll, I'll obviously keep you all um, apprised to where that's going. But uh, we've I've asked the state to on the Senate side to not keep that proviso in there, if at all possible. Uh, obviously, it's going to end up coming back to the House. So any conversations y'all may be having with any of the uh, House members from our delegation about uh, not trying to um, legislate through the budget, um, which is what they're attempting to do. The proposed short-term rental bill uh, that was proposed from a gentleman out of Georgetown uh, apparently has not gotten any traction. And then this proviso popped up in the budget. So um, still keeping a watchful eye on that and I'll continue to report as, as things potentially change as we get some kind of model ordinance from MASK and dissect and figure out what that is, obviously we'll be sharing that with council as well. Thank you, Mr. Funderburg. Which brings us to council comments. Mr. Richard. I'll please. get started, obviously, as usual. Thanks, uh, police, fire, first responders. We really, really, really appreciate all that you guys do. You know, testament tonight, there's something to be said about people's pets and they are children. You know, it's a, uh, People hold them dear for sure. Um, 
aside from that, you know, guys, it's the deer's been a topic of conversation for years now. I remember in 2015 for the candidate forum, when I was running the first time, I mentioned having a bow season with permits on the golf course or tags or something that just allowed for thinning of the herd and was like I next day was like slap on the wrist, never repeat that again. You won't get elected. But the what it's I mean it's a legitimate option. But so just so you guys know, and I can only speak for myself, not these four gentlemen that are here, but we are looking at every potential option. Obviously we've been presented with what the price is to trap them and ship them and shoot them. Let's shoot them. Well, we could only take out 80 a year. How many, with the, with the humongous herd that we have in the city, how many fawns do you think are born every year? Do you believe it's more than 80? 100% it is. So how many years of 80 per year will it take and how many thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars will it take before that 80 per year catches up and starts to thin the herd. My estimates are 12 to 15 years, but that's just me. I don't know. That's just my guesstimate. So is that a legitimate op option to spend 15 to $20,000 a year for the next 15 years before it starts to thin the herd? Can we afford $1,500 per deer to, or 1,200, whatever it was, to trap them and trailer them and send them out to the wild somewhere else where they're probably gonna die anyway? Like, what is the answer? We Trust me when I'm telling you guys, we're discussing it and we're trying to figure out a solution because we don't want everybody's azaleas eating. Deer didn't eat azaleas around here 15 years ago. They do now. It's just, it is what it is. But, you know, we passed the ordinance where, hey, you shouldn't feed the deer. Does that potentially help them go off the peninsula to look for more food after they're done eating everyone's azaleas? Do they have to go look for more food? I don't know, but trust me when I say, because we see all the chatter on Facebook and social media as far as, but what's this council doing about this, that, or the other, and it's 50-50 in the city, but trust me when I say we have those conversations, and there just may not be a, a, a conscious right, there, there is no right answer right now on what we do to make it happen, And for, from what I could tell. Again, not speaking for any of these guys. But trust me when I'm telling you guys, we have constant conversations on what potential next steps look like or what could we potentially do to make things happen. You know, again, for me, in 2015, seven years ago, it was like, because on Marine Corps Air Station Cherry Point, when I was stationed there in the Marine Corps, for eight weeks out of the year, from 5.30 a.m. to 8 a.m., there were no golfers on the golf course. And it was known that you had 60 guys that had tags or permits that were in tree stands, had to be 20 foot or more or 15 foot or more up in a tree with a bow. And that's how they thin the herd there. Could that work here? Maybe. I don't know. Could it be, would it be very, would it blow up social media? Absolutely it would. But is it an option? Maybe. You know, again, just things that we're discussing to see what we could potentially do for this astronomically large deer herd that we have in the city. And so just wanted you guys to know, just because we hadn't had it on the agenda for the last three meetings to talk about the deer specifically, doesn't mean that we're not having the conversations with the people we need to, to try to help and solve the problem that some people think are a problem, some people think they're beautiful. I love seeing 30 deer in my backyard in the morning sleeping. And so we're, we're working diligently for our constituents to ensure we're doing what we feel are the right things and ensuring we're doing our due diligence between here and getting to that finish line on what the potential is on what we do next. But that's more than I've said in two years probably, so I'll shut up, man. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilman Chimmons. <clears throat> uh, R.E. the deer, I agree with everything you said. So let's just say, uh, you said you couldn't speak for all of us. Well, you spoke for me. Um, <clears throat> Chief and Chief, uh, as always, thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you guys do and your staff. Um, you know, the, the, the story of the rescue, you know, small town, TK, you know, save the animals. I mean, that's, that's as feel good as it gets, um, with all the stuff, like Chris was saying, our mayor was saying, stuff that gets thrown around at everybody. That's just a really cool story and, and, uh, proud of you guys for doing that. Um, me personally, I don't normally comment on public comments, but I'm going to, uh, comment on Liz. Uh, and her her comments. Um, I, I like payments, Liz. 
Um, I don't have a problem with payments. Um, I live my life by payments. Um, matter of fact, every time we go to do something, the bank goes, man, your credit score is so good, but y'all stop. Just stop. So um, luckily I'm able to make those payments, but uh, I don't have a problem with that. Um, that astronomical you know, council pay. That's right. Um, I mean, I remember when I ran, not too many years before that, um, you know, in reviewing the finances, uh, the city uh, had next to nothing in the bank. And uh, in my five years on council, it has tripled, give or take, Charlie, in that, in that range. Um, I, I, I like having money in the bank. And I agree with what you said about Bob Barkin. He's a brilliant, brilliant man. Um, so I'm, I'm going to always defer to, to the experts in a situation like that. But um, I, I, I love having money in the bank. You never know. Anything could happen. So <clears throat> anyway, that's my uh, four cents worth. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilman Surly. Um, I will uh, piggyback on what both Councilman Ryan and Gus have both said, and I do want to share that I do have a goal. It would be my goal to see the city become debt free. Uh, that was one of my uh, concerns when we went to our uh, goal setting and planning uh, session. Bob Barkin and our city staff have done a remarkable job of managing our income and our debt. Um, my concern is we do have a significant amount of debt and I would like to see that reduced because um, if anyone is paying attention to what's going on in the economic world out there, it's threatened. And, uh, and I'm concerned about that for our city. So that, that was why I had a goal to try and produce more revenue for the city that's not tax revenue and to try and reduce any debt that we have. So I just want you to know where, where my heart is on that. Um, certainly uh, have no intention to take away from the brilliance that we have on our team to look at those budgets and analyze them and understand uh, how solvent we are as a city. They're much better at that than I am, and I, and I trust their judgment tremendously. Um, I just, uh, I, I've been in trouble as a family with debt in the past, and uh, I don't want to see our city get that way either. So uh, that said, I, I will say this about our first responders. What I really admire about our two chiefs and the teams that work with them is um, how, how human these guys are. When they look at a situation like that, it'd be really easy to say, well, everybody's safe, nobody got hurt, all the kids are out, all the families are out. But these guys go the extra mile every time to make sure that every single life that they can save is gonna be saved, every piece of property that they can save is gonna be saved. And I really admire the work that goes into that and the commitment and the heart that you guys have for what you do. And that obviously translates to your team. So thank you for that, fellas. Um, regarding the deer, man, uh, Ryan Richard could, couldn't have said it better, I think. We talk continually about this issue. We continually research through organizations and wildlife biologists and the DNR and other organizations that can give us feedback and input on what we do to manage this herd. folks. We have nine times, almost ten times, the number of deer on the peninsula that should naturally be here. There's no natural predators that are keeping that population down. There's no hunting program that's managing that, that process. In the wild, that's how it goes. Coyotes and other animals and hunters uh, manage that. DNR closely monitors the deer herd throughout South Carolina and issues tags commensurate with the number of deer that are available to be harvested every season, every year. Uh, that doesn't happen in TKK. They're living large in TKK and they're destroying our property. Um, it is a significant concern. It is not a biological concern. The one lady that spoke about that today, she was concerned about malnutrition and disease. We've been told by the wildlife biologists that that is not so, that this is a nuisance issue. It is not a biological issue. Um, so if you're okay tolerating the nuisance, then move on. But if you're not, I can assure you that this group of five gentlemen and our city staff are working diligently to try and figure out what that plan should be. There's two easy answers, do nothing or shoot them all. Those are the two answers, two easy answers in my mind. And I don't like either one of those answers, to be honest with you. But we're trying to figure out what a short-term and long-term plan looks like that's safe and fair and equitable and economical. 
and accomplishes the goal that we're trying to accomplish. So please understand that um, tremendous energy goes into trying to come up with that plan. And I can assure you that we're going to be committed to it once we come to a solution. This time of year, it's really hard to do anything. The males have lost their antlers. They all look like does. Um, it's really hard to understand what any type of culling process would look like this time of year. So if you'll be patient with us enough to let those antlers start crawling back in in August and September, we're going to do another study. We're going to figure out where we go from there. And you'll certainly be hearing more about it in the fall, early fall, hopefully. Um, I have a concern that I do want to share with staff, if I may. I've had several residents reach out to me regarding the safety of spectators at the ball fields at Catawba Park uh, from foul balls coming over the backstop and into other areas of the park there. I've not inspected this area myself, so I don't really know what it looks like. I'm going to go out there this week and do that. But their concern is that balls are getting tipped out of the field and into other spectators' areas, and they're concerned that someone's uh, likely going to get injured or worse. Is there is that the first time you're hearing about that, or is there any uh, feedback you might have? We realized it in the fall. Uh, so we increased fence heights around the backstop and then added netting uh, over the spectator areas around the concession stands. Um, okay. that, that's already been done. Good. Uh, that was brought to my attention. Get foul they were, balls they were coming, more concerned coming. about right behind the plate, I think. Uh, it's going to land on a net at this point. Okay. Uh, yeah, but are foul balls still going to leave the field? Yes, they absolutely will. Right. Um, it, it's the nature of the game when you've got that many – Many ball fields that you know in, in a pinwheel design. I mean, you see that everywhere. Yeah. Uh, whether it's Cherry Park, Target Park, um, Ripken facility at Myrtle Beach. Right. I mean, it, it happens everywhere. Uh, but we have extended the fence heights uh, from the backstop all the way down to the dugouts. Did that uh, over the winter and installed netting uh, around the concession stand restroom building um, directly behind the backstops uh, to mitigate and minimize that. That's okay. that's already in play. Thank you. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. Uh, last thing for me, just some clarity for our residents on the short-term rental issue that um, our city manager discussed. Currently, municipalities are able to put ordinances in place that don't allow short-term rentals, so that prevents you from having somebody staying on a weekend. You don't know who they are. You want to know who your neighbors are. You want to know who lives on your street. You want to be familiar with who those folks are, and if you're of the mind that you don't want someone coming and going that you don't know on your street. That's why we have that ordinance in place. Rentals have to be 90 days or longer. You can't have Airbnbs and TGK, things of that nature. The state, some folks at the state are trying to make the state over, in my opinion, overstep their authority and not allow us to make that decision as a municipality. So um, I would encourage you as residents to reach out to your state legislatures. Um, our uh, House representatives and our Senate representatives and tell them how you feel about that situation because they have the authority to make that happen or not happen. All right, just, just want to share that piece of information with you. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, sir. Dr. Mayor Pro Tip. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'll start quickly to echo what uh, Councilman Shirley just said. Residents, if you don't want short-term rentals, reach out to Representative Dave O'Neill, Senator Michael Johnson, um, they're the ones that can stop this. Uh, and they know us, they hear from us already, but if they hear from you, it could really make a difference. So um, if, if you don't want short-term rentals, uh, please please reach out to, to either or both of those gentlemen. Um, <clears throat> Chiefs, thank you so much, uh, great job. Um, I'm thankful you hadn't had to ever use the uh, dog mask, pet mask up till this uh, past uh, event, but I'm, I'm glad you had it. And uh, I know the mayor and I were there at that time and saw your, um, you know, officers um, doing their work, and it was uh, quite the sight. Um, and I know some of them, you know, got a little tore up afterwards, so I understand it, but they did some great job. And thank, thank, thank you to you. Please thank your team for us. Um, excited for. Catawba Fest or Catawba Park getting going with the concerts, so see everybody there. Uh, staff, thanks for everything you're doing. I know the parking, we had some problems, but you got it straightened out, and uh, we're going to work through it. Um, and that is all I have. Thank you, sir, <clears throat> which comes to me. Um, folks, I'd like to thank everybody for attending tonight. Um, 
your comments are well taken and, and we, are, we do take those into consideration, so I appreciate those. Um, I was there that day on Spinnaker. Um, the damage that fire does to homes is sometimes irreparable. The damage that fire does to <clears throat> one's mindset of peace in their home is sometimes irreparable. The two pets that we lost, uh, they were worked on just as hard as the pets that, that we didn't lose. Uh, our police officers gave those pets a police escort to the doctor. If that'll tell you what kind of heart our police officers have and our firefighters have, um, it was heartbreaking, to say the least, uh, there witnessing those, those two pets uh, meet their demise. But the hope of the other two that came out, or the other three that, that, that made it, uh, and the fact that our guys were there uh, lickety-split, and the professionalism, the training that they have received, thank you, Chief, um, and then just the, the whole community working together uh, was, was just humbling to me. Uh, my hat's off to the neighbors. Uh, the neighbors provided some shelter for the family uh, for quite a while. Uh, neighbors provided money, blankets, clothes, um, just everything that you could possibly pour on this family. And that's TK, folks. That's, that's what we do. Uh, another family um, lost their home, uh, which I've spoken with them several times. Um, you know, we're continuing to take donations. We're continuing to uh, just take clothes, blankets, um, whatever you can have. This family actually lost everything. Um, so just get, get with, uh, give me a call, and I can, I can put you in touch with those folks. Um, I, I know right now they're, they're in pretty good shape. Um, there, was a, there was one point to where we thought we might need some pickup trucks to uh, help haul things to the dry cleaners and that kind of thing. Um, if that comes to, to a need, I'll let everybody know. And if you got a pickup truck, we'd love some help. Um, but, um, you know, folks, we, it just was an, another example of TKK coming together. Uh, and I want to thank each and every person that was involved in that, neighbors, firefighters, police. Uh, Tom, thank you for coming down as well. Um, so let's just keep being TKK. Uh, let's, let's help our neighbors out, help our friends out. We're coming together on, on um, for Catawba, the, the ceremony at Catawba, to dedicate that. Please come out. Uh, it's going to be a great ceremony. You'll get to see me throw one by those kiddos. <laughs> and then my arm will fall off. <coughs> but um, uh, you know, just get involved with your community, folks. Uh, summertime is a great, great area to do that. If, we have some, if you have some, some folks that need some help with their homes, Please reach out to me and let me know. Uh, we need some some candidates for our service Saturday projects, um, so please reach out to us. Let us know, uh, and then I just appreciate everybody uh, and and what you do for our community. Uh, our, all of our committees, the folks have stepped up to uh, to be part of those committees. It's it's a lot of time. It's it's a lot of effort that they put forth. Uh, you see some of those folks out. Please shake their hand. And tell them thank you for a good job that you're doing. And with that, our next item is uh motion adjourn. to adjourn second i've got a motion and a second to adjourn aye. all in favor say aye. aye aye motion passes unanimously thank you folks <laughs>